there, my name's Vince from MyMateVince.com and in this video today I'm going to be revisiting the Fluke Multimeter that was sent to me by Lee and when we turn it on and measure something it's often up on 3000 volts, so let's see if it's still doing it not that way round, oh it's gone too well, there you go, 3000 volts there and uh, sometimes with the other way it doesn't measure anything at all. So I spent hours and hours and hours and hours and hours on this thing and I got nowhere. And then all the comments came in. So I've been working through the comments. Now, some of them were worrying. They were saying it looked like the Fluke chip had a crack in and certainly on that first video it did. And I've zoomed in and looked and yes, it does look like there's a crack on the Fluke chip. But I don't think, well listen, it could be affecting it. It looks just on the surface though. Some other people said that possibly this has been swapped around 180 degrees, so it's not reading properly. So I looked into that and unfortunately it wasn't that. But do you remember on this one here, there was evidence of battery corrosion. Now I found something and that's where now I put it back together and I'm starting the video now. So the two things I've tried are looking at the Fluke chip and swapping this 180 degrees round. Now reading through the comments, loads of helpful comments as I always get in my videos. So big thumbs up to everybody that uh, did comment on that video. Whether right or wrong, it's always good to have different options because it's very hard to know when you haven't got it in front of you what it is. So there's no such thing as a bad comments, it's just different people's opinions. But a few people, quite a few people, did mention that they thought it might be something to do with lacking a ground. And one comment, what I'll do is at the end of the video, I'll flash up the comments that were to do with what I think the problem is. And uh, yeah, you can see if your, your, your name's up there. One comment said to go from, because I was going from the positive lead back, but they said go from the negative lead back. And that might bring up the problem. So that's exactly what I did. And check this out, I found something that I missed when I was working on it before. So let's just pull these out here. And let me just quickly strip it down again. Okay, so I've got my meter set to continuity. And this is the one that we're working from. So in the first video, I was working from this one here. Yeah, the positive, but look, let's go from the common, the uh, negative here. Now, this isn't linked to the negative of the battery, which I thought it would be, but anyway, I was going from this one here, and I was just probing around the place, yeah? So on this side here, and also on this side here. So now we're on this side. And look at what I found. So if we come up here, we have a common here, and then I started tracing it down. Now, remember, there was corrosion on different parts of the board around this area here, because it must have been battery leakage, which made me convinced that it was a problem with the U1 chip, the Fluke chip here. Also, actually, I'm sidetracking, but let me just zoom in to show you that little chip on here, which a lot of people thought was the fault. And it still might be, because what I've seen might not necessarily fix it. All right, can you see, look, along here, there's a nasty little crack but I'm hoping that that's just surface deep it doesn't seem to have much depth to it but who knows that could have uh, that could have blown out there or maybe it was just from for example taking it apart and stuff and it might have just been scratched or maybe during manufacture it was scratched somehow but I've kind of gone along it a little bit and I don't think I don't think it's deep but it is hard to uh, it's hard to tell anyway look while I'm here now let me just zoom in and show you the path. So we're going from this one at the bottom here. No, sorry, this side here, because I've got it turned over. And when I go up to this little point here, where are we? Tap, tap, tap. Here, right. So I have got it coming up here. Now watch this. From this path, it goes down, down around here, down, down to here. And now I'm just putting my meter here and here. And you can see I have got continuity, yeah? So that's all good to hear. Now look what happens. It goes down, down here, to this point here. And if, for example, I go between here and the point that I've just shown you, I have got continuity. If I go between here and here, continuity, here, fine, here, fine. Now look what happens. And I'm hoping this is the problem. Look, can you see it? Here. Look at this sneaky bit here. And you know what? I have already given that a tiny, tiny little scrape. So you can see 
almost looks perfect. Imagine if there was a bit of green there, that looks perfect, but there's no continuity uh, through it. And also, look, look what's under here, the battery contacts. And remember, these were all corroded in my first bit of the video. So now if I go between here, I should have continuity going up, 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 up here, up, up, up to here. And I haven't. And you know what this point is here? This is under the selector switch. And so many people thought that it was a problem under the selector switch. They said I should remove the selector switch and have a look for corrosion under there. The brakes here, so we're going up here, up, 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 up. There needs to be a ground, a co the common needs to be coming to here. And it's not. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna scrape back this bit here. I'll put it on macro, let's scrape it back. And I'm going to get back to the track on here and here, put some solder on it, and I'm going to jump her over it with a bit of enameled, well, not even enameled wire, but I can just use anything. And then I'm going to put some, probably just use a, probably use a strand of Cat5e cable, actually, just one strand. There's on stranded ones, there's seven cores in each wire. So I use one of the strands there, and I'm then going to uh, put solder mask on it. The reason I don't want to go from here to here, which would be the easiest, is just in case, remember this is a multimeter, I'm sure it wouldn't make any difference. I'm nearly sure it wouldn't make any difference. But if I was to replace it there to there with a thicker gauge wire, would it possibly do misleading readings because the, there'd be less resistance. I don't think there would be because we're talking about a trace. I don't think there would be, but I'm just gonna repair this tiny bit here with a wire that looks a similar size to the track here. So let's zoom in, let's get going. And this time I'm really, really hopeful. And do you know what's amazing? I spent so long in this before and it's kind of, you start to just give up in your mind. This time when I looked at it, I found that fault within five minutes of, well, I found something wrong. Again, this could be blown here, there could be other problems, but I found something wrong within just five minutes, just from getting the confidence uh, from reading the uh, messages. And that was such a great idea to go from that. I was doing all my testing from here, but to go from the common instead. What a great, what a great comment. Right, okay, let's, uh, let's scrape that back. You could use a fiberglass little pen, like a fiberglass brush for it. I'm just gonna use a little blade uh, because I don't like the fibres on those pens. So the battery must have just leaked. Well, we know the battery leaks on this side. The thing is, it looks so clean now, but you don't know how bad it looked before it was cleaned up. So if you were the first one in here, you'd probably see corrosion everywhere, and then it would give you a better idea of where the fault is. But when you uh, when it all looks so good, it's very hard to uh, it's very hard to find it. And look at that, tiny, 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 just here. It's just gone, just through this bit here, hasn't it? There, that's it, gone there. Right, let's get some IPA, clean that up, and let's try to get some fresh solder on here. And here, I'll be amazing if this fixes it. So this is just a little bit of isopropyl alcohol. And I'm just using a little cotton bud, a little Q-tip, just to get rid of the rubbish from around it. Yeah, there you go. You can clearly see the break now. So let's, uh, it'd be nice if I could just jump it out with solder, but I think it's going to be too big. Let's put some solder on those little tracks either side. I've got my iron set to 400 degrees Celsius, and I've got quite a big tip on it. Well, it's, it's not big when you look at it with your own eyes, but through the zoomed in bit here, it's big. Right, that should be enough. Now let's get a little bit of wire. Now thinking about it, rather than using one strand, I've got quite thick jumper wire here. I might just use, I might just use one of those bits, because I suppose it's better to be thicker than thinner, isn't it? I'm gonna bend that round. Try to solder that on and uh, then cut it. Right, so I'm just going to try to tin up this wire a little bit. Hopefully, 
hopefully that will do. And now let's try to solder this on. I'm just going to cut that now and see what it looks like. Uh, well, I say that it's probably on. I'm just going to try to tap it, but when I do this, I might end up taking it off. I'm just going to tap the bottom bit of it and make sure the bottom bit's on. Well, I'm not going to push my luck with that. That is going to be on. And now what I'm going to do is cover it in solder mask. But before I do that, I just need to check for continuity. Yeah, that's definitely on. So let's just give that a quick clean up. So I should have known it was to do with corrosion and I did check around here because I was checking certain traces but I didn't check all the traces on the board but I should have concentrated my efforts underneath here it's just that it all looked okay and obviously this is one that I didn't check. Right so now let's check for continuity. So now we've got it between here and up to here yes we've got it and between here and here brilliant okay so now 100% is doing something different than it did before and if you look at my meter you can see it is a direct short now yep, 0.7 ohms let's get some solder mask on that and then we'll put it back together and fingers crossed this might be working after spending all those hours on it the other day I've got some solder mask here I'm just going to put a tiny bit on the exposed bit. There we go. So now what I'm going to do is put the UV light on that for five or ten minutes and hopefully it will go nice and hard. put this on its side and shine the light. Well, I'm going to come back to that now in five minutes or so. But I think that should do now so let's just check see if it's leaving any green behind. No I think that's it. Excellent so you can see now that it actually looks quite nice. If you were just glancing over the board, you wouldn't really know that that was there at all. And just do one more quick check for continuity. Between here and here, and we've got it now. And I just want to make sure it's not anywhere near that little connection there, which it is not. Excellent. Right, okay. What I'm going to do now is any normal person would do all the testing now, but remember, this is me, and also it's a video as well, and it's nicer to have it kind of finished when you do the final testing. So I am going to give it a nice good clean up with a wet wipe and a bit of kitchen towel, clean up all the case and all in here, put it back together, and then we can do some testing on it and see now if the low battery symbol's gone which was always there even though the battery was fully charged, new battery. And also let's check for DC now, whether it's given normal readings. And also we can check for diode test, ohms test, and we'll do a quick test on AC. I don't really want to get too involved with AC.
Oops, would help if I put the battery in. Here we go, what do you think? I am really hopeful this time. So we want to turn it on, and the main thing I want to see is that the battery symbol is not on. So here goes, let's go straight to DC. Yes! Brilliant! The battery symbol has gone! Right, now, and also look, it's not measuring anything. Come on now. Excellent, 7.29 volts, positive. Now let's swap the leads over, because on these ones, the uh, yeah, this is the uh, positive here, so now it's gonna be neg negative. 7.3, negative, excellent. I'll check that now with my meter. I do think that battery's flat, because I did a tongue test on it earlier. Right, there you go, 1.5, negative. Now, put it the right way around. It's working! It was that! Right, let's just check this against here now. So, what did we say it was here? 7.3. Right, 7.3. I'm not saying mine's accurate, but let's just see if it's the same. Okay, 7.1. Do you know what? I think that the fluke would probably be more accurate. Maybe it needs calibration? I don't know. I haven't got another... Well, I, do I have another meter? I have got another meter that I can check with. But anyway, that can be done off camera. Right, so what else do we need to check now? Let's check for continuity, see how responsive it is. Okay, you would be able to use that. Because some of them take a, take a bit of time. Just want to compare that to my one, because for me, that's so important. So you don't have to look at your meter, and you want it to happen straight away. Ah. Mine is much more responsive. Look. So although you can see the deflection in the meter there, you need to hold it on. Not for long, it would be usable, but you know when you're quickly going around a board? I'll be honest with you now, if I was fault finding on a board, just in my videos, I, I would rather use my one. Yeah, much more responsive. Okay, but that's, I don't believe that's a fault on the meter. I think that is just to do with the design of it. Oh, they're touching together. Right, let's just check a couple of resistors. Oh, this is really good. Right, two, what's that? 220 uh, and 180. So that's 220K. Okay, there you go, 219. Very good compared to my one. Interesting. Oh, there you go. 196, which is right, which is wrong, I think, again. I reckon the fluke is probably going to be uh, probably more accurate. Because that's what you're paying for, aren't you? And 177 on 180. So, uh, yeah, this is all looking, this is all looking good. Oh, yeah, 170, yeah. They are slightly different though, aren't they? Don't know which is more accurate or not. Right, okay, so I'm happy with that. And what else would I be using? Let's try a diode test. Let's just get one of these. Okay, so 0.5 that way. So it should be open this way, shouldn't it? And there we go. Again, that's correct. Open, red lead that side, 0.569. Let me just double check that again on the red lead this side. Yeah, there you go. Excellent, right, happy with that. So now, uh, I've never done uh, an amp amperage, is that right, amperage test down here. Uh, I sort of understand how to do it, but I am uh, don't really know. I've never done it before, so I'm, I'm not gonna do that. Uh, I'm just gonna assume it works, I've never used it on this one. I've never used it on this one. Millivolts, I'm not going to have anything, I don't think, to test the millivolts. So now, the last thing I want to test is the AC. Now, please do not copy what you see in my videos. Uh, I don't know how safe this is. I know I'm going to do it safely because I'm not going to touch anything. But I, I wouldn't want anybody to copy what you see in these videos because obviously that I don't mind mucking around with a 9 volt battery DC. But what I'm going to do now is put 240 AC into here. 
and uh, but I'm going to do it where my hands are nowhere near anything. So I'm going to unplug my solder station and I'm going to use the lead that plugs into it, you know, like the kettle style lead. So with this here, the top one should be earth. Well, they're, they're labelled up there neutral and live. So what I'm going to be doing is putting the black into neutral and the, uh, the red into live. And I'm not plugging it in. So it's not plugged in at the moment while I'm messing with it. Okay. So I'm just going to rest them because these, uh, these are quite big. So I'm not sure how good a contact they're going to make. So I'm live and neutral in here. We're on volts AC. Now I'm going to plug it in with my hands well clear. Also, I'm well clear of the leads because this lead here is melted. And although it's not through to the copper on the inside, I don't know how safe that would be. So again, this needs new leads. Right, here we go. Keep my hands well clear. In. Come on, measure. Fantastic. There you go. 249 volts AC. So I think we can say, I'm going to unplug it. I think we can say that this meter is now fixed. How fantastic is that? What a result. What a community fix. Oh, honestly, that's so nice. It, it means more to me because I spent so many hours on this. I mean, although the video was one hour long, I, I, it could have been like five or six hours I actually spent on it. So, yes, now looking back, I could have easily found that fault on the first video. But I didn't because, remember, I everything I didn't know what the fault was and it was only because I tested so many things in the first video that would have eliminated a lot of problems and then by going through the comments that was just the one that did it for me checking from that one there and you can see that that one there is where the fault was so uh, I can't explain it properly but if you read the comments you'll see I think it's because it didn't have a ground reference to go from or something and that's why it was, was so out uh, so what I'm going to do now is, I'm ending the video, but I'm going to flash up some of the comments, not all, I'm going to flash up some of the comments that helped me. There might be many others that would have helped other people, but I'm just going to flash up some of the ones that helped me. So uh, big thumbs up to Lee for sending this out to me, and uh, a massive thumbs up to everybody that commented. And thank you so much, and here come some of the comments that helped me now. I'll say my goodbyes, and hopefully I will see you soon. I love this one, and I hope you did too. Thanks so much. Take care. Bye now. You said it was the last time But you keep coming back to tell me Sorry that you take back All the things you said just to hurt me My love just went cold But I'm still burning My love just went cold Why? Build my walls up, but you're taking